Plans for Sentosa and Pula Brani could be changing, with some ideas going back to the drawing board. Set your alarms. Tickets for the F1 Singapore Grand Prix go on sale at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And flying in style, Singapore's indoor skydivers bring home four world titles. Hello, you're watching The Big Story with me, Olivia Kuei. Remember to subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. Sentosa is relooking its long-term plans in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and to that end, the master plan to redevelop Sentosa and Pulau Brani into a choice tourist destination will be reviewed to account for trends arising from the pandemic. First announced in 2019, the master plan divides the two islands into five zones. The vibrant cluster zone will have large-scale attractions. Island Heart will feature hotels, conference spaces, dining and retail outlets. And the waterfront zone on Pulau Brani will house a discovery park. The ridgeline zone will connect green spaces from Mount Faber to Mount Imbia and feature nature and heritage attractions, while Sentosa's beaches will be rejuvenated with a water show, fairgrounds and other attractions in the beachfront zone. With more is journalist Ong Keng Jin. The pandemic, King Jin has forced a rethink to the redevelopment plans for Sentosa and Pulau Brani. But how major will this review be? Is it essentially back to square one? I love you. No, I don't think it's going to be back to square one. Uh, Sentosa Development Corporation has told us that they're still going to maintain uh, the five zones that they have split Pulau Brani and Sentosa into uh, in the review of their plans. So I think this the other question we want to ask is why exactly uh, is there a need for review? And I have to caveat that the answer is wasn't given by Sentosa Development Corporation. Uh, but analysts have said that um, COVID may have changed the tastes and preferences of consumers. For instance, uh, some, some attractions that might have had large crowds gathering together in the same place might not be as appealing to consumers anymore. And uh, these might need a rethink or redesign. Uh, another reason is that COVID, as well as uh, current geopolitical tensions, have affected the supply chain, as well as the cost of raw materials. And the building costs, uh, the timing of the completion of projects, these might have to be relooked in this review of the Sentosa Rani Master Plan. So building on that, King Jin, the Sentosa Development Corporation is conducting feasibility studies on tourism opportunities post-pandemic. Do you have more details on what these opportunities could be? So analysts have said that local tourism has picked up during the pandemic. I think one of the reasons might be the Singapore Rediscovers Initiative. Uh, and as what is reopened, I think one of the things that Sentosa will be looking at now is how to retain uh, the pool of local tourists that they have attracted over the pandemic. Uh, given that uh, tourists, local tourists now have, have uh, many choices overseas, I think it would be interesting to see how Sentosa keeps itself relevant uh, to Singaporeans who are thirsting for travel. Uh, the other thing that Sentosa can also look at is how to uh, continue to be attractive to d digital tourists, people who want to visit Singapore remotely and see what it has to offer uh, without leaving the comfort of their homes. And this is something uh, that the pandemic as well as the review gives an opportunity for. So with Singapore pushing uh, towards the Green Plan 2030 and also looking at how to develop more sustainably, I think the review also offers uh, Sentosa Development Corporation an opportunity to see how to leverage its natural landscape, as well as, uh, as, well as the beachfront setting that it has uh, to offer attractions that are more sustainable and do not uh, require a huge amount of development and leave a huge carbon footprint. Thank you, journalist Ong Keng Jin. COVID-19 infections hitting record levels in Shanghai, but authorities say they will start easing restrictions in some areas. China's biggest city today reporting more than 26,000 daily cases for the first time. 
It's the country's worst outbreak since the virus was first detected in Wuhan. For the 25 million people confined to their homes, daily life has become a challenge with limited access to food and medical care. It's a different story over in Malaysia. The number of new infections falling to 8,112 on Sunday, the first time it has dipped below 10,000 since early February. Public health experts, though, are urging people not to let their guard down despite Malaysia's transition to the endemic phase. Back home tickets for the Formula One Singapore Grand Prix going on sale this Wednesday at 10 a.m. Three-day grandstand tickets start from $298 and a full entertainment lineup will be released in the coming weeks. Well, there's also talk of Singapore hosting back-to-back -back races this year to fill the gap left by the cancelled Russian Grand Prix. Assistant sports editor Jonathan Wong discusses the likelihood of that happening. What we do know is that the Russian Grand Prix, which was set for September 25th, has been cancelled because of uh, the invasion of Ukraine. So that's left a gap in the F1 calendar. Uh, and while we understand that uh, Qatar is seen as the front runners for it, uh, to fill in that gap, uh, there is a possibility that Singapore could come in as well. But we've reached out to the race promoters here, Singapore GP, and they've said that they don't feel that we are first choice. But right now, their priority seems to be to focus on the October 2nd race and to ensure that the entire race weekend plus all the fringe activities run smoothly. From an F1 perspective, I can understand why they would want to have the race here, back-to-back -back weekends, because you know it just saves money. It's practical. You have two races in the same city. You don't have to fly uh, and bring all the 20 cars from city to city. Uh, and it's just economical, and especially in a time where Formula One is trying to save money. So from that perspective, it makes sense from F1. From Singapore, I think it also makes sense because, you know, we are looking at trying to reopen our borders, bringing tourists. Um, having two races in back-to-back -back weekends is a very huge draw uh, for international tourists to come here. Uh, obviously, there is also the second weekend means that you have to have make arrangements for additional manpower. You probably need to bring in more entertainment acts because I guess from what we understand, if you did have back-to-back -back weekends, you would have maybe the first one set at an earlier time and then the October the 2nd race at a much later time, the usual time, 8 p.m. as is tradition for our night race. But you would obviously have to have the same sort of caliber of entertainment acts for both the first race and the second race. So probably not a very straightforward uh, arrangement if Singapore wanted to do it. But I think if they did uh, pull it off, they would have, there would be huge interest and that would do very well for ticket sales. Twists and turns at the World Cup of Indoor Skydiving, where this routine by Singapore's Kira Poe clinched her the gold medal in the freestyle open category. Our indoor skydivers taking home four titles in total. Big congrats to all. I'll leave you with more of Kira's routine. You can visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. Join me tomorrow on The Big Story.